Joshua chapter 18. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh. 1 Samuel 4. 1 Samuel 4, verse 1. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines in battle and pitched beside Eber Ezer, and the Philistines pitched in Ebek. And the Philistines put themselves array against Israel, and when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew the army in the field, about 4,000 men. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore has the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of the enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Now here's where the ark has been staying. Right here is Shiloh. I mean, Jerusalem has not been established yet. So since the time of Joshua, here is the religious focal point that you would point this is where the ark the tabernacle and everything that would be in the priests are centered at shiloh before jerusalem's ever even thought of and set up the tabernacle congregation there so see there's there it is and when you get to in the uh samuel and all that it's still there the priests the ark the center of the worship of God, Jehovah, of the Israelites are at Shiloh here. So this would be the first base of it in the land. And the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are ye slack to go possess the land which the Lord your God which the Lord God of your fathers have given you. Give out from among you three men of each tribe, 21 men. Because there's seven tribes, three, 21. And I will send them, and they will rise and go through the land and describe it according to the inheritance of them. And they shall come again to me. And they shall divide the land in seven parts. Judah shall abide in their coast. Judah's already got their land. And the house of Joseph shall abide in their coast on the north. We already did Ephraim and Manasseh. And ye shall therefore describe the land in seven parts. And bring the description hither to me. That I may cast lots for you. Here before the Lord our God. But the Levites have no part among you. For the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. All right, that's one of the tribes. And Gad and Reuben and the half tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond the Jordan on the east, which Moses, not God, the servant of the Lord, gave them. So, in the midst of this, we got seven tribes of God having not got their lands. And some of them say, Well, what about Levi? Where are they? Well, they don't get land. They're the priests. Judah, he already got his. We already read that. Gad, he's on the other side. Reuben, he's on the other side. Half tribe of Manasseh, that's on the other side. Well, what about Ephraim and Manasseh? We just did those previous chapters. So, in what we're doing here, Joshua sets forth to give us a little P.S. And the men arose and went away. And Joshua charged them that went to describe the land, saying, Go and walk through the land and describe it. And come again to me that I may cast lots for you before the Lord in Shiloh. So see, there's the Lord in Shiloh at the ark, at the tabernacle. And casting lots, now I don't know how they did it. Well, let me give you some examples. Seven straws. <laughs> and when you pull the longest straw or the short straw, that'd be one way. Uh, seven marbles. The black marble. And what you would call today gambling 
would be a form of lot casting here. And it would be amongst the people, the short straw, the black ball, the odd number, the guy who, you know, whatever, however they would do it, this is the cast in the lots. And it's to rule out one person. I don't know if Israel... Pull names out of the Pull name, yep, pull names out of the bag. I don't know. It never says how Israel does it. Maybe that's exactly what they did. They put all the, the seven tribes' name in the book. All right, we got this section of land, and, okay, this tribe gets it. And a farmer does this kind of casting lots. He's got, before the season comes, he's got to look at his seeds and say, okay, which seed am I going to pray to the God that's going to be good this year? I mean, if I got five kinds of seed packets, well, I don't know what God's going to do this year. I don't know if it's going to be too much rain at uh, this one, or not going to be enough rain. This one is drought resistant, or which one's going to be value of money? Life is a lot itself. Never mind the casinos. Never mind gambling. Life is a gamble itself. And that, so, like, it, best way would to be put: put the tribe's name in a hat or something and pull. So that's what they're going to do, and the Lord is at Shiloh. That's important. And even First Samuel, there it, it's in Shiloh. And the men went and passed through the land, and described it by cities into seven parts in a book. Now I don't know if that's the book of Joshua, from eighteen on, because it will be listed by cities. But he also said, go through the land and describe it. I mean, here is a forest. And next to this forest is this city. Well, here's a bunch of rocks. And here's this town. Here's a river and a settlement. Here's a great well with people in, uh, around that well. And they go through the land and describe it. Rock, remember, we've already seen rocks had names. And what we see here is written down in a book. So there are books that are not in your Bible that are there. Book of Jasher is one. It's a book that's recorded by the Bible, but we don't have it. And it's not for us to go, well, let's go find that book. Now, this could be the book of Joshua from chapter 18 on because it's going to describe the cities. And we'll see that when we look at verses 11 down to 27. It's going to describe this piece of land given to Benjamin. So it could be Joshua. Seven parts in a book, and we're going to have seven parts coming up. And came again to Joshua to the host at Shiloh. Shiloh. And Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord. And there Joshua divided the land unto the children of Israel according to their divisions. Now the lot came on Benjamin, and like my wife said, maybe they cast their names out of, out of a bucket or something, right? And maybe the high priest, okay, pull out a name. What do you got? We got Benjamin. Benjamin, all right, there are seven balls in this thing, and they come along, everybody gets a white ball, white ball, and Benjamin gets the black ball. He However they did it. And the lot of the, the tribe of the children of Benjamin came up according to their families. And the coast of their lot came forth between the children of Judah, between the children of Judah and the children of Joseph. So between Judah and Joseph, and we'll see where, where they are. Here is Benjamin. And the border on the north side was the was from the Jordan. And the border went up to the side of Jericho. We know where that is. You can find that on the map. On the north side, and went up through the mountains westward. And the goings out thereof were at the wilderness of Beth Avon. Beth House. And the border went over from, from thence toward Luz. That's where Jacob. To the side of Luz. Which is Bethel? Luz is Bethel, and Bethel is Luz. Remember, Jacob changed that name when he saw the angels in his dream. He said, "This is the house Beth of God, El. That's Jehovah." And I believe it says there in Genesis, you know, the place was formerly called Luz. 
That's Genesis 28, 19. So Benjamin is where Jacob, their father, started his journey. This is a place where he's running from his brother. And he takes stones for a pillow and he lies down and he's on his way to Laban. And he'll get his two wives, four wives, you know, Leah and Rachel, then the handmaids. And he builds up the tribes of Israel. Here is his foundation. Here is where he met God. And it's Benjamin, the second son of Rachel, southward. And the border descended to Adaroth Adar, near the hill. Let's see that hill. Now, this is that book. There's a hill. The hill stands out that lieth on the south side of the neither Beth Horon. So, like I said, this could be that book they wrote. And then it could be a lot that this is the place where the, the uh, three men of Benjamin went. And then the three men of another family went this way. The three men of a tribe went to that area. I don't know. I can't explain how they did it. And verse 14, the border was drawn thence and compassed the compass that's in circle. The compass is a circle. The corner of the sea southward from the hill that lieth before Beth Horn southward. And the goings out thereof were at Kurja Baal. Which is Kirja Jerum, a city of the children of Judah, that was the west quarter. So Benjamin is right along Judah, and Judah is going to, I mean, Judah is going to enswallow Benjamin. Benjamin will be known as Judah, and we'll see that with some of the cities coming up. The south quarter, verse 15, was from the end of Kirja Jerum. And the border went out on the west and went out to the well of the waters of Nephtal. Now that's important because wells, you need well, you need a water for living. If you don't have wells, you don't have water, you've got a desert. You can't survive in a desert. The border came down to the end of the mountain that lieth before the valley of the son of Hinnom which is the valley of the giants on the north and descended to the valley of Hinnom. All right, let's take this valley of Hinnom for a moment. 2 Kings 23.10. Now this is bad area. 2 Kings 2nd Kings 23.10. You're going to get three names here that are very important. Now remember, Bible plays it. Well, how come I don't understand this? Because it may be another name. Chiraf is also the Sea of Galilee, and it has another, has three names. So 2nd Kings 23.10. And they defiled Tophet. All right. Well, what's that have to do with it? Which is the valley of the children of Hinnom. That's where we are. That no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. Oh, that's where they were burning their babies and their children. The Molech. The valley of the, the, valley of the children of Hinnom or Tophet. Tophet means drums. And drums were used to beat out the children crying. The screams, the hollering, the mother's tears of that that big idol throwing these children into the stomach of fire. I said stomach of fire. We're going to keep going. Second Chronicles 28.3. That's important, stick, fire. Second Chronicles 28.3. Oh, excuse me from my nose, folks. 28.3. And this is what we're learning. This is in the land of Benjamin. 28.3. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hay. Oh, so it's a church service. 
and burnt his children in the fire. After the abominations of the heathen, I thought you were supposed to get rid of all those. So here's a King Ahaz that's in Jerusalem running to the area of Benjamin. We'll look at it in a moment. And he is having a worship service with incense. And he's destroying his children in fire. Now this is southwest of Jerusalem, this city. This is the place they call Gehenna. Now, Gehenna is where they get the idea is it's not hell in your Bible. It's the garbage dump. Gehenna means fire. And where they were build, burning these children. So when, when they changed the Bible and replaced hell, Shiloh, they're trying to make it where this God is where they burn their children. And it's just totally wicked and wrong. Now, not only that, in Joshua, verse 16, we got something else interesting here. All right. Let's start in verse 16 again. The water came down to the end of the mountain that lieth before the valley of the southern Hinnom, Topheth, Moab, which is the valley of the giants on the north, and descending to the valley of Hinnom, one specific valley, to the side of Jebusite. Now, let's go to the same chapter, chapter 18, verse 28. Let's find out Jebusai. Verse 28, and Zebul, and the Ephah, and Jebusai, which is Jerusalem. On the side of this place of Hinnom, where they're burning their babies, where they say this is the place hell, right there is Jebusai, right there is Jerusalem. And I believe uh, I have to take a look on this one. Let me. I don't know if I can find this one real quick. Uh, all right, First Kings eleven seven. Thank you, Lord. First King. I didn't have this one right now, but look at First Kings eleven seven. We did this study the other day about Solomon. How they were supposed to get all these people out. Why? 11.7, 1 Kings 11.7. 1 Kings 11.7. We'll start in verse 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, and his wives turned away his heart from other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David, his father. Solomon went after Ashtoreth. That would be today Mary, the mother of God of heaven. The goddess of the Zidonians. And after Molech, or Malcolm, the abomination of the Amorites. Amorites were supposed to be wiped out. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as David's father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemish, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech. There it is. That's what we're talking about right now. He goes down to Benjamin, and they have these worship services of small G-O-D-S. And he even makes, he, not only is it in a valley, but he makes it in a high place. Molech is that where they're killing the children. And that's a payment. And we've already read the fact is that is one of them children that God told them, you're to wipe out or you're going to marry into their women. And you're going to follow their idols, their gods, their images, their pictures, and their worship. Exactly what Israel's doing, they did not listen to God. And we here's Jerusalem. Here's the big place. Here's the temple built by Solomon. And we read in Joshua... To the valley of Hinnom, to the side of Jebusite on the south. On the south side of Jerusalem, here's all this action. Here's on the south side, after the temple's built, here's Solomon builds worship church for Molech. In the valley of, uh, uh, oh boy, I forgot the name. 
about the valley of hidden Topheth. And it's Benjamin's land. So Joshua verse 16 again, the valley of hidden to the side of Jebusai on the south, and descended to Engroer, and was drawn from the north, and went forth to Imnishiv, and went forth toward Gilead, which is over against the going up at Edom, and descended to the stone. Here's a stone of bull. So when they wrote in that book, here's a place. Here's a here's a stone. And the son of Reuben. So Reuben is here. And of the children of Reuben, here's a guy. He just named this big stone. There's a stone. I'll give it a name of myself. And passed along toward the side over against Arba, northward. And went down to Arba. And the border passed along the side of Beth Haga, northward. And the outgoings of the border were the north bay of the Salt Sea. That's the Dead Sea. At the south end, the Jordan, that was the south coast. So uh, Jericho and the Salt Sea is the tribe of Benjamin. It will be fully Judea later. And Jordan was the border on the east side. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin by their coast, thereof round about according to their families. Now the cities of the uh, the cities of the tribe of, ben, of the children of Benjamin, according to their family, were Jericho. That cursed city goes to Benjamin. Beth Hagla in the valley of Kiz, Kiz and Beth Arbara in Zemurim, Bethel. Yeah, that's where that's where Jacob started off. And Ephraim and Para and Ophrah, Ophrah. And boy, look at that one. Sefer, how many? No, I feel sorry for his mother calling him. Sefer, right here, I'm getting you in the house. And Harper and, and Geba, 12 cities with their village. So there's 12 cities, and besides the 12 cities, there are villages. There's more land, there's more places. Gibeon. Well, let's look, look at Joshua 9 3 on Gibeon. Chapter 9, verse 3. What's Gibeon? It's history. Ugh. Excuse me. In Joshua 9, chapter 9, verse 3. Gibeon. Now, they've just entered the land. They just defeated uh, Jericho. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua had done, now these are the ones, Gibeon, these are the ones that came to Joshua with the old bread, the old shoes, the old wine cast. And they make a deal with the children of Israel. Please spare us. We're from far, 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 far away. How far are you away? Well, when it comes to Jericho, one of the cities mentioned the children of Benjamin. Well, there's Gibeon. Well, you weren't that far away. And then 1 Kings 3 4. 1 Kings 3 4. This is one of the known cities. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 4. And this again, this is Solomon. Solomon has a lot going on in Benjamin, 1 Kings 3 4. We'll start in verse 3 to show his early life. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in statue of David his father, only sacrificing and, and burnt incense in high places. There's no Jerusalem yet. My question is, why is he not in Shiloh? And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for there was a great high place. That becomes a burden of Israel. And a thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. So here is Solomon's at Gibeon. And then you get that great prayer of Solomon for wisdom. And God speaks to Solomon there at Gibeon. Where Joshua is going to go and fight for Gibeon and protect him because we made an oath of God to protect him. 
And this is all going on in the land of Benjamin, which is by Jerusalem. So verse 25, Gideon and Ramah. Ramah, or Ramah, however you want to say it, is six miles north of Jerusalem. It is the road to Samaria through Jerusalem, and you would think that Jesus would pass through this road. Now, there's something interesting about Remnant. You just look at, well, there it is. Well, what's so big about that? Okay, let's see. Jeremiah 31, 15. Studying to show thyself approved unto God, and you've learned such great nuggets. Yep. Jeremiah 31. And this has to do with Jesus. 31.15. Yep. And then something personally to Benjamin himself. In Jeremiah 31.15. Ah, excuse me, folks. And this is a prophecy. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard out of Rimmah, lamentations and bitter weeping. Rahel, Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children, Benjamin, because they were not. They're, what? What's going on here? What is the story going on here? We pick it up in Matthew 2.17. Matthew chapter 2, verse 17. And we'll start in verse 16. And this is where the wise men come in. And it's not the nativity scene. And verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. Jesus is about two years old, and all the coasts are up from two years old and under. He's after Jesus Christ. Not the baby. When these wise men come to Jesus, he's two years old and younger. He would figure he would get to the age of two, just to make sure he got all the male children. And under, according to the time which he had diligently required of the wise men, Benjamin, I mean, excuse me, Bethlehem. Babies being killed. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy, the prophet, saying, in Ramah, there was a voice heard, lamentations, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel, now Ramah said, Rahel, weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not, they're dead. They're dying. That's Jeremiah 31, 15. And where does this all start? This all starts in a city in Benjamin. His mother is mentioned. Bethlehem is a city of Benjamin. Gideon and Roma and Berioth, that's another city you'll find mentioned in the Bible. Mizpah, that's another city, uh, David, I believe. Shafarah and Moza, Rechem and Irapil and Tarla and Zila and Alpha. Jebusai, who cares, which is Jerusalem. That's the Jebusites you read about. The Jebusites. Before Jerusalem, it was Jebusai, the Jebusites. And Je Jerusalem is in the children of Benjamin, which will be accounted for 
the children of Judah because they just become one big unity. And Gibla and Kirja, 14 cities with their villages, so there's a lot more. This is the inheritance of the children of Benjamin according to their families. So there's a little, you know, you know well, then we just learn a lot just by cities and, you know, just put you, you know, read through, okay, I'm done. No, there's a lot of information in there. And we've learned, we see in one little city, of ben we see a prophecy about Jesus Christ right in the middle. 